Okay, so here I've got a model loaded in. Uh, that is three pieces right now. There's uh, a lattice part that's been generated. And then there's two mechanical parts. Uh, and you can see the mechanical, so the, the lattice was generated from this volume, you can see. Uh, but this volume has a bunch of design features. And basically what I'm going to do is try and reinsert these design features back into the lattice. So these are exported from Fusion, these meshes. You'll see that I've actually meshed them in pretty high resolution. Uh, and we're going to need that to do this operation. So when you export from Fusion in the STL export, there's an, there's an option for maximum edge length. And I usually put that to like one millimeter or something. Um, Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get some structure on these meshes because they're completely unstructured. So I'm going to use this tool, Edit, Generate Face Groups, and that's going to split it up into regions. Um, the default setting is okay, but you'll see whoop, in some spots, um, I'm going to use the C hotkey will let me recenter the camera under the cursor. You'll see like in here, there's different colors, so we got to drag this up. That one is faceted a little bit lower res. We want those to be joined into continuous regions. Um, so we're going to accept that and do the same thing on the other side, basically. Oops. Uh, generate face groups. And you'll see the same thing in here. If you look in some of the deeper holes, there's the different colors. So we'll just drag this up a bit uh, and hit accept. Okay, so now we have topology on both of those. Um, that's what I call those face groups. Uh, and then uh, the other thing, the initial thing to do is to clean up this lattice. So this lattice has problems. You can see there's little blue regions. Those are holes. So that's, I don't know why that is what that's from, if it's from the STL import or if it's um, produced by the lattice generator. I know if you zoom in, you'll find some regions where there's like self-intersections and stuff like that. Um, we'll get rid of some of those later. But first of all, you just want to get to a, a continuous mesh. So if you use an analysis inspector, it's going to highlight all sorts of things. Most of these pink balls are little floating pieces of mesh on the inside that aren't connected to anything. The blue ones are holes and the red ones are non-manifold areas. And so, I mean, if you want to be careful, you could do this more precisely, but I'm just going to use this auto repair all and that's going to basically uh, nuke all of those things. And we have a clean, solid mesh now. Uh, it's a good idea to run it again just to make sure it, so the recompute didn't miss anything. Um, Okay, so now we are ready to start putting this uh, back together. Okay, so I'm going to do the front part first. So I'm going to turn front on. And I'm actually going to make a copy. Maybe I can make this smaller. Nope. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, I need to make it, I want to work on a copy because I don't want to lose the original. So I'm going to make a copy with the copy button. It's going to be a bit slow because it's a big mesh. Um, okay, and so the first thing I want to do is I want to cut this uh, object here um, with the plane, this cutting plane, basically. So what I'm going to do to be able to use this surface as a cutting plane is I'm going to drop a pivot. So I'm going to edit, create pivot, change this to surface point, geometry frame, and I'm going to just click there. You see I can place a pivot on the surface anywhere. I'm going to put one right here. Drop the pivot. Uh, now I'm going to bring this back in. Select it. And if I do a plane cut, I can click on the pivot. And it's going to cut there. I got to, You see it's the wrong side. So I'm going to use this big blue arrow to flip it. Um, and you'll see that I'm cutting there. Actually, I'm going to cancel this and hide the other one so we can see what's happening. Uh, flip it. Um, so now the plane cut is working, but you'll see some artifacts. You see in the bottom here, there's no hole fill. It's because this lattice mesh has lots of self intersections. So before we can do this cut and get started, we need to actually clean up the self intersections. Um, so I'm actually going to just do this once. So I'm actually going to delete this copy, bring this guy in, and fix this one, and then we'll fix the from the original. Um, so there's a tool make solid that I'm going to use. So make solid will basically clean up all this stuff. Um, and at first you see it's going to do some resampling. So you're going to see some loss of fidelity. So what we can do is we can turn these up. 
set that to 256, 256, uh, and we'll try that. You can go higher here if you want. I think this is going to be sufficient. It's going to lose some of the super thin regions, um, potentially. Uh, and I'm going to assume that that's okay here. If it needs to go higher, it can be done. It just means everything else we do will be slower. Um, so I'm going to call that good. I'm going to accept that. And that's going to make a solid lattice. Uh, and that's what we're going to build off of going forward. So I'm going to make a copy of the solid lattice. The file is going to get bigger and bigger. I'm going to hide that one. Solid lattice. I'm going to do plain cut. Keep a pivot, flip it, and now you see we got clean cuts here. Um, oh, so you can see this floating blue stuff. So actually, the solid lattice uh, has some errors that came out of the make solid. So what came out is little floating bits again because it some of the things that were self-intersecting ended up floating. So this is a, a problem with basically every lattice thing I've ever seen. Um, so I'm going to do that auto repair all again, uh, and then we'll do the plain cut. Inspector has a hotkey I because you're going to use it a lot. Um, okay, so now you see we got rid of the floating blue bits, which were boundaries and stuff like that. Uh, so we're going to accept this cut. Okay, so now we have a clean front piece. I'm going to hide this pivot. If you want to see the pivots in the object browser and give them names, you just click this icon and then you can hide it. You can also use a hotkey. On a Mac, it's Command-V, and on Windows, it's, it's Control-V to toggle visibility and control shift V shows everything. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so now basically we've got our initial piece and we have to get the design features into it. So we need to basically get this smooth surface here and we need to put these holes in it. Uh, so that's next step. Okay, so before we go on, I'm just gonna mention one thing. Um, if you wanna know our two surfaces kind of right on top of each other, if you see this rendering artifact, the things are flickering, that basically means that they are as planar as they can get in floating point precision. Um, just so just so you know. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna make a copy of this front piece because I'm gonna get rid of some of it, hide everything else. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of the parts of it that I don't need to preserve because I'm gonna use the inside bits. So what I'm gonna do is just paint a little bit on those things and then use uh, this modify expand to groups which is under G hotkey uh, and then I'm going to delete those parts which is X. So now I've got the three regions that I want to include so that the top and bottom ones oh yeah right I want to separate these so I'm going to use edit separate shells and that gets going to make them three separate objects they're all inside out so this colored bars means that you're looking at the back side of those surfaces so these top and bottom ones what we need to do is we need to flip them around so the first thing I'm going to do fill the holes. An easy way to do that is to use that inspector tool. Uh, it, it's auto repair. We'll just fill those holes. Uh, uh, and so you can just do that on both of them. Uh, and then I want to flip them. So um, when it's back facing the selection brush, you see I'm in the selection brush now. Um, you would normally see a highlight. On the back faces we don't show the highlights. So um, you can, you know, make the brush really big and paint, but also, and check this allow back faces, but also you can do is just hit Command-A or Control-A, and that will select the whole thing. You can't see it because it's inside out. And you do flip normals, and that's just going to flip it over. Um, actually, I'm going to, no, I'm not going to group them. This one, the same thing, edit flip normals. Uh, one other quirk here is that um, we lost this front edge here. This, now if I... So that expand to groups by selecting hit G, I can also do by just double clicking. Um, but you see it's got both. So we need to do the generate face groups again. Um, and drag this up on both of these. And I'm going to hide this guy. Um, okay, so these are the two surfaces. And we've got our, I'm going to give this a different name. Lattice front. That's the piece we're working on. And basically what we want to do is subtract those two things out. But here's the problem. Uh, first of all, the Boolean will probably fail. Uh, mesh Boolean is not super reliable. And this is um, 
not an ideal case. But the other problem is that uh, it's not really like these. This you know it may be the case that there's not really the right amount of lattice around the ends here. So what I think we need to do is put a shell around this boolean in the shell and then subtract this from the shell. So that's pretty easy. Uh, we can use make solid. Uh, and you set this mode to accurate and you get the offset distance. So we set that to say something like two millimeters. Um, and that's going to generate an offset version, um, which we can now uh, subtract from. So we're going we're gonna to do that for both of them. Accurate, two millimeters, except, so now we've got two solid shells and we've got our front lattice. Uh, oops. Unfortunately, this thing gets wider as the names get longer, so I gotta make it a little bit bigger. So you see now we can um, get those guys in there and it hid the pieces we wanna subtract out. So uh, the you know, one thing we do need to do is we need to cut the ends of these off. So I'm going to actually bring that pivot back and do plain cut this guy, flip it, except and you see it's right on the edge there, and this guy plain cut. I uh, select the pivot and then flip and accept. So now we've got the backs cut off. So now we can do it in the front. So you could, you could leave this part sticking out here, but I'm going to actually do something a little bit better. So I'm going to fit a, a single patch that roughly fits that area of the surface. Um, and then I'm going to use that to Boolean to sort of cut off this surface. So what I'm going to do is select a big area around there and do this tool fit primitive. And that's going to let me fit a plane in here. I'm going to put it sort of in the middle. Um, doesn't really have to be super precise. Uh, and then, oh, it's part of the other. So I got to. I want to separate this out. So I'm going to select it and use this edit separate, which is on Y hotkey, which will make it a separate object in the scene. So now I'm going to do something we call attract to target. So I'm going to take the lattice, I'm going to click this magnet icon. That makes it a target object. Now I'm going to take this thing, select the whole thing, and do edit attract to target. And I'm going to disable fine sharp edges and also preserve boundaries. And what that basically did is it pulled this um, mesh onto onto the underlying surface, but it kept it as a single piece. So um, we're going to be able to use that to cut away. Um, so I'm just going to accept that. Um, so you see now it's pretty, it's a nice clean mesh so we can still use it for operations. So I'm going to just select it all again and I'm going to go to extrude. So I just need to make this into a volume so I can use it as a cutting tool. Uh, just put it up there, it doesn't really matter where it goes. I'm going to select this guy, shift click on this guy, that gets me Boolean difference. And now you see I can cut that. And if I make this guy not a magnet anymore, you see it's roughly aligned. So you could do that if you want it to be more aligned, you could do that multiple times um, to get uh, more um, like more accuracy there, but this is good enough for me. Um, and so I'd have to do it on the bottom again, though. So um, let's get the big patch. So the, I mean, you could try and do this just with the surface of the. Um, oh, and we want to make sure single primitive is checked here, otherwise it's going to give us a bunch of them. Um, you know, so the reason it showed multiple primitives there is because this is actually multiple selections. Um, that's the problem with trying to do it with a single patch. Um, or with the underlying, like use the actual lattice surface, especially if the lattice is a bunch of pieces, um, this will work better. So I'm going to accept that. Uh, oh, right. Separate it. Make the lattice the target. Select doll. Track the target. You'll get good at these things. Uh, disable preserve boundaries. And that looks good enough for me. Accept. Um, you could even do something if you wanted, for instance, it to be smoother. 
you could do a smooth like form smooth um, and you could remesh it up if you wanted it to be even smoother. So then you'll get like a, a smoother, not following the lattice so much. Um, Extrude that out a little bit so I can cut with it. And then Boolean difference. And we get, so this one isn't too, oh yeah, because I smoothed it. Uh, maybe that was a bad idea, let's see. All right, we're still okay. As long as there's no lattice bars that are going to be floating in front of there, then uh, we'll be okay. So it's still, still going to make a solid on the inside. Okay, so now we've got two objects that we can use. We can combine in this other piece. So we're going to do the combine a different way. Uh, that'll get us um, a regions we can Boolean away from. So there's just one more piece left. So these are the two solids. I'm going to hide those. So there's this big shell piece here. Um, so what we need to do if, the, if a tube is going to go in here is we need to cut away all of this inside stuff, which we could try to do with a Boolean. Um, but I'm going to do it another way that is a little bit more reliable, especially if the lattice had lots of bars and stuff like that. Um, so what I'm going to do actually, I just want this to be a bit wider. So because it's symmetric, I can get away with this. I'm just going to scale it out um, this way. And that shouldn't be changing its shape. I mean, if you want to look at angles and stuff like that, um, first of all, under the view menu, you can turn on orthographic view, which is probably what you want. But also you can turn on snap. And then, so you get this by holding down space bar, you get this pop up here. And you can look on the edge, you know, so that thing is actually a nice, uh, you know, something I can scale on one axis that's not going to change the shape. So I'm going to do that, accept that, and then, um, I'm going to actually extrude this, so let's try uh, axis is that Z. Yeah, so I can type flat maybe. Okay, and this is going to give me a piece that I'm going to be able to use. You'll see how. And I actually want it, so here this is inside out again, but I actually want this piece to be inside out, uh, and you'll see why. Um, so now I've got my lattice piece and I've got this inside out piece, um, which I actually want a copy of. So I'm gonna make a copy because I wanna keep this around. Actually, I should have made the copy before I did that. Let's go back. So let's take this guy and make a copy and do that extrude on Because the, these are all gonna get, um, we're gonna lose all these. And I want to keep those other ones around. So we'll set that to flat, direction Z. Let's give it some space. Okay. So we got this guy, we got these two. So these are uh, sort of right way out because they're going to get unioned, and this inside out one is going to get subtracted. And it's all going to happen in one operation with the make solid. So I'm going to select them all by shift clicking uh, and then use combine. So that's going to merge them all into a single object. So there's overlapping shells here, which is normally a problem. But now we're going to do make solid, which is going to clean that up. And what make solid is going to do, you'll see, is it's basically going to cut away that inside. And there's some chunks, but we're going to fix those anyway. How we need to do a bit of post process there anyway. Um, so this is another make solid. Um, so you could have, if the plane cut would have worked, you could have skipped those other make solids because each make solid is going to do a bit of resampling. Uh, ideally, the resampling rate is higher than your thinnest beams, and then you won't actually see any artifacts. Um, but the key thing here is you see um, that it's combined all those pieces. Uh, sometimes these artifacts happen. Um, we're going to clean up this back face again anyway, because we're going to lose these edges and then make solid. Um, so we can clean up those artifacts too. Uh, okay, so I'm going to accept this. These artifacts happen when things are directly coincident. So you could have maybe fixed that by having those stick out a bit and then cutting them off again, um, but I'm just going to go with this. Okay, so we've got our solid shell here. Um, and what happened? Oh yeah, right, the other one is still lattice front. Okay. Uh, okay, so now we made a solid piece, it's a little bit 
crusty, but we can easily clean that stuff up and we can subtract out our design features. Uh, one thing here that um, you might want to do, if you wanted this interior thing to be completely smooth, is you could have added a thin shell layer by taking that solid piece that we made based on this guy and making a, you know, going the other way basically. So like, you would basically take this and go extrude a normal direction uh, outwards, right? Um, would make a little shell like this and you could have added that shell in and then it would have made a smooth surface in here and cut out all of the interior bits um, or like a, a solid shell in there which might be important for strength or maybe if you don't want to have like sharp edges in there that are going to scratch the post. Okay, so here we are back. We've got our solid lattice piece on the front here, and I'm going to now um, take out these two guys, which are our design features. Um, so because the lattice uh, pokes out a little bit, let me just hide this guy. Um, we're going to extend these a little bit. So I'm going to use the transform tool, um, and I'm going to set so in the transform tool, there's a world and local frame because I know this is aligned with the axis. I'm going to use a local frame. And I'm going to extend the back out a little bit too. Okay, just make sure it's the right direction. So that when we do the cuts, we have a bit of space. And I'm going to do it on this one too. Unfortunately, it doesn't remember which frame you picked. Okay, so let's bring back in, get that pivot, bring the solid back in. So now, oop, I want the front solid. Really indifferent. So now it's solid in there, so this will produce a nice interior surface and give us a nice cut at the back. Um, and we can do the other one. Really indifferent. This is part of why we need the meshes that we exported from Fusion to have good triangle density. If those were like the single super long skinny triangles, these booleans, uh, especially in the current release version, would look terrible. Um, okay, so now we've got uh, our sort of two screw holes there. So I said I was going to clean this up. So this is mostly good. You see it's basically overlapping. Um, but there's some places we want to pull it down. Uh, you know, some little chunky bits um, from the voxelization that the Make Solid did. So what I'm going to do is make that a target surface. Uh, then I'm going to go back to this guy, and there's two different ways to do this. So one, say if I want to brush a region and suck it onto the other surface, um, like say I wanted to get rid of this whole thing. Oh no, that goes through, so that won't work. I want to get rid of this whole one entirely, this little bump here. Um, so I can select it and do Edit attract a target and basically attract a target is going to pull it onto that surface and you see they're coincident now. Um, the other thing I can do is sculpt. So uh, there's a brush tool under the brushes called attract and if you have a target set then the attract brush will pull things onto this and if you want it to go faster you can put up the strength um, right, and so we can use that to sort of by hand clean up these problem areas. Um, and that may be fastest and gives you the sort of most control. You know, you can paint out things if you decide you don't want this bit here. Um, it's also, it is possible to fill in these holes if, manually if you wanted to do that. It's a little bit tedious though. Uh, I won't get into that right now, but this is pretty quick and will let you go around and basically uh, clean up all that stuff. So I will do that, but I'm not going to do it all right now. Um, the other thing that we can do is uh, clean up this edge in the same way. Um, oh, just rid of that. Um, so let's get our original piece here. So that's the front body piece. I'm going to turn off this guy don't need him anymore. So we're going to um, 
make that front body piece the target. Okay, and so now there's a tool we can use it to attract a target. And I'll, I'll first do a section of edge here. So this does require, there's no sort of magic here, unless you want to use a plane cut and just slice off a little bit, that would work. But then you're kind of losing the tolerances you designed in on the other side. So make a selection like that, and then you use this tool edit, attract a target again. Um, oh, that is too. Oh, you know what? I didn't want to do it on this. I wanted to do it on the cut lattice. Um, okay, so what do I need to do? I need to. Sorry, I just I need to flip through my pieces here. Okay, I need to do it again. So I need a copy of this guy. I, I should have saved a copy before I did that. Oh no, we have a copy, right? Yeah, that's this. There it is. So we can use this this piece. Um, I don't need this bit down here, so I'm gonna get rid of that just to avoid having more things in the scene. So I don't need this um, inside out piece. So I'm gonna paint it. You can't. Oh yeah, check back faces. You can't see that I'm painting it, but I'm painting it. At least if I X, you see that I had a little bit selected there. I'm going to paint it, and then I'm going to use Edit, or Modify, Expanded, Connected, which selects the whole thing. I'm going to get rid of it, because I don't need that piece anymore, I believe. Anyway, I can get it back if I need it pretty easily. Okay, so I'm going to use this as the target. I'm going to bring my lattice here back in, because I want to re reconstruct these sharp edges back onto, or from the cut piece. So dun, paint a little bit here just to see what's going to happen. I'll do attract a target. Attract a target. You can do a, a big paint, but it's probably better to do it piece by piece. So what I'm going to do now is check this fine sharp edges. And that's going to kind of magically pull my sharp edges back out. So it's actually pretty cool that it does that. Um, so if I hide this guy, you'll see that. Ooh, yep, that's no good. Okay, so I gotta remember to not paint on the bottom. Um, so this will require some care. It might have been better to do the plane cutter. You could have even um, oh shoot, it's gonna lose the selection. I'm confused. I got the wrong thing as the magnet. There's the original lattice magnet. Anyway, you can see basically what it's going to do here. Track the target. Bench up edges. Set. Uh, and that will get me my sharp surface back. And you can also uh, do it in this area. Um, basically, paint around this guy to get rid of that chunky bit. And this is really a, you know, you can use the painting or the brush tool also to do this. The, the brush tool won't give you this precise sharp edge. Um, oh, we're adding a lot of triangles. That's why it's. But, uh, and um, you can also use this to actually get this sharp edge back too, if that was important. I, I feel like that is less critical, so I'm not going to do it. But anyway, I'm not going to go through painting this out on the top and bottom in the video, I'll do that uh, offline. But essentially, once we do that, uh, this piece will be reconstructed uh, and have the design features you know, as precise as an exported STL would that you're going to send to a printer. OK, so I'm just about done <clears throat> cleaning this up. I just thought I would show one more thing. I managed to uh, get that sharp edge back using the so I'm using the attract brush tool, and I've got that uh, curved interior 
patch as the target object over here. And I should have shown this before. Basically, if you want to clean up edges and stuff, you can just brush along them and it'll basically suck those edges onto the surface. Um, and this works even if that, that cylindrical patch had multiple pieces. So if you really want to get a crisp edge, you can make, we could put it like an intersecting plane on this face. We could create a plane aligned with the pivot uh, and then pull right onto that intersection curve. But actually, um, because uh, of how he did this, I didn't need to do that. I mean, you get a little bit more precision, but the scale of any deviations is so tiny here. Um, so what I'm doing now is just, uh, it's actually pretty cool to watch. It's just pulling those triangles right down onto that edge, and then the remeshing is cleaning it up so that you don't end up with a bunch of like self-intersecting junk along there. Um, and if you, uh, you know, turn the speed down, you can actually have more sort of control and stop when it looks good to you. Um, as you make the brush smaller, it gets, yeah, the other thing you could do, if you want to control, if you want to use like a small brush, but really high detail, you can open this refinement panel. So you crank that up. Now you're gonna get a ton of triangles along there. You turn it down, you'll get fewer. Um, anyway. So, you know, when I zoom super far in, it looks a little chunky, but the scale of those artifacts is tiny. And so here we have basically our piece. Uh, and if you bring in the front here, we can sort of do side by side um, and see the two. We basically got those surfaces back. Um, and you can see that they are basically coincident. Um, the, the Boolean subtraction might shift things a tiny bit on the inside here, but you can see that they're essentially aligned. Uh, okay, so that's the first half, and actually the second half is basically going to be the same. Um, we're just going to have more spots to do. Oh, one more thing, I guess. There's, you know, sometime, because of the way we did that Boolean, you can get little chunky stuff. Um, you can see the edges, maybe. And this is super easy to clean up with the smoothing brushes. So just go in here to, like, shrink smooth or something. And you can just brush that stuff um, to clean it up. And that's how I would recommend. That's sort of the fastest way. I mean, there's more controlled ways, but... Um, if you want to get the visual effect of it being a sort of organic surface, um, you can just paint that back out. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now let's do the second half. Uh, so remember, this is the our sort of design space and the mechanical features. There's some holes. There's the same two things here at the front, and then there's this slot at the back. Uh, and I'll show you how to put all those things in. Uh, remember, we want to insert those into this generated lattice. Uh, so I've, I've gone through ahead of time and made all the pieces. So these are the things, these are the holes we need to subtract from the lattice, uh, basically. And um, this is the cavity in the front we want to cut away uh, to give us that precise smooth surface. And these are the sort of um, buffers I added around those features so that there's solid around all those cavities, uh, which, uh, you know, in this context, I wanted to do. Um, so I, I, I set these up as a set of parts uh, that are predetermined. So, you know, I'm showing you how to do these. In the first half of the video, I showed you how to do these in mesh mix, or how to extract these basically from this original surface. But you don't have to do that. You could have modeled those cavities in your CAD tool, and actually it'd probably be easier in your CAD tool. There are some parts that like this slot at the back uh, that would be really hard to do that way. So I'll show you as I go through uh, how to do those things. Okay, but the basic principle here is pretty simple. So before you remember, I cut this thing first and then I worked on it afterwards. I actually realized that it's probably simpler to just um, do the make solid first and then cut the plane afterwards. Um, that'll save us some cleanup work. So I want to get this piece, these uh, sort of 
surround regions and the lattice all on the same object. I'm going to combine those all. And then I'm going to do like I did before uh, the make solid, which is going to subtract this inside out region and sort of union in or Boolean in all these other regions. So let's do make solid. And let's turn up the settings, turn off the reduce. And we're still going to have to clean up a little bit because this is still not going to be perfect. There's going to be some junk in the middle here, but it's going to be a lot simpler. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to accept that. I'm going to sort of go with that. Um, the inside surface here actually, because uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I added on this side I added a shell on the inside, whereas on the other side I didn't, when I did the front half I didn't add that shell, but I added a shell there. And that shell is just slightly offset from that cavity surface, which means that when I do the make solid, it still leaves some little artifacts in there that we're going to have to brush out. But so now, basically, I've got all my uh, solid parts done. So now I'm going to uh, do the plane cut up here. I'm going to use this pivot that I made, flip it. So now we've got our clean front surface with the cavities embedded. And then uh, I'm going to bring in the cavity objects. So these are the, the regions I need to have on the inside. Uh, and I'm going to Boolean difference those all at once. This will be not a problem. I believe, yeah, because they're not inter none of them are intersecting. So you see it's going to cut away all those regions. So I kind of authored those things to make sure that they were going to hit the lattice. Uh, it's going to grind a little bit. So down here at the bottom, there were some bits sticking out. So uh, if you go back and look, there was a kind of like an expanded cylinder down here that I used. Um, okay, so now you can see basically in like a couple seconds we're almost we're almost done already. Basically, we've nearly got our functional part. So I'm going to show you now because I could have set up the pivots for this, but I'll, this is one thing that's different on the back here. So I need to uh, make a pivot on each side here. It's a little tricky because I got to click on the inside. Actually, you know what? I'll just delete this outer surface because uh, I'm not going to need it again, basically. Ooh, I want to save it though so I can show them side by side at the end. Okay, so we'll put a pivot on that side. Just got to click carefully and a pivot on this side. Um, and then let's bring our lattice back in and hide this guy. So I want to do plane cuts here, but it's a bit tricky because I can't, I don't want to cut through the whole thing. So we have a we have a plane cut that lets you cut from a selection. Um, so I got to line my camera so I'm kind of looking straight down and I'm going to do a, a, a sort of rectangle area select. So in Mesh Mixer you can do a draw select like this, but you can also do a, you know, you, the same thing, if you just click once at the beginning, then you draw a polygon. So that's something that uh, we added a few releases ago. Oh, I gotta make sure I don't clip the bottom. Because I wanna get the whole thing, in case you didn't know. Okay, so I'm gonna do a plane cut again, but I'm gonna do the plane cut under this selection. So this is only cutting the selected area. Um, so I can set here. But, you know, you can see I can't, I can't really actually cut there. Because uh, I don't want to throw away that side, so I'm going to set the mode to slice. So slice leaves everything, it just inserts a loop. So you can see, if we turn on the wireframe and zoom in, that there's now a cut line in there. So now I'm going to do another one. All right, I've got to do my selection again. Oops. Undo. So do the plane cut. Hit that line, hit the pivot, slice. So now we've done two plane cuts. So now what we've actually done is we've, although it looks like it's a single object, we've actually got a separate piece in there. So I can go edit, separate shells, uh, or I'll show you the other way. Separate shells will separate everything. The other thing I can do is I can just 
paint a bit in there, and then hit modify, expand to connected, which is E hotkey, right? And that's now selected that in inner strip. So there's actually faces in there. We could see if we put in the shader, see those interior faces that are just coincident. And so I'm just gonna X delete those. So now we are basically done. We've got our uh, cavity here at the back, and we've got our cavity at the front. So uh, I can go through and clean this up, and I will do that super quickly, but I will do it in fast forward so you don't have to listen. Okay, so we are done. Uh, you know, and you can see here, we've got our sort of design part, something that looks nice and precise, and we've got our generated lattice part, but we've got all the precise features reinserted. And uh, you know, if you put these on top of each other, you see, you can see from here, that hole basically precisely lines up, the slot is there. Uh, we got the slot at the back. We got all the, all the features are essentially identical because we've basically, transferred these exact meshes from this side over to this side except in a few places where we you know had to do some hand cleanups but hopefully you can see how you can set up pretty fast workflow uh, for the majority of the tasks setting up all the volumes and that kind of thing uh, you know once I had them all set up then I mean, it was really only a few operations to insert the buffer region subtract out these pieces um, and sort of get the parts ready uh, and then you know the final cleanup is something you sort of can't avoid doing manually if you want to do the final cleanup but if you want to iterate on your uh, lattice or whatever you can you can do that pretty quickly once you've got the sort of design space set up properly uh, okay so thanks for watching and uh, hopefully this was useful